Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you want to become a software engineer in 2025, whether you are a beginner or looking to level up your skills, this roadmap will guide you. By the end of this video, you have a clear step-by-step -step plan, starting from low-level programming all the way to specialization in high-paying fields. To become a software developer nowadays, there's a lot to learn. Right, there's a lot to learn, but without a clear roadmap, you get confused because you go on to YouTube, you find different answers, different uh, questions, right? So let me solve that for you with this roadmap. First, what I found useful is to actually learn the foundations, right? So on your stage one, you should learn low level programming languages, right? Before you start building complex applications, you need to understand how computers actually work. So what I would recommend at this stage is to learn C, right, or C++. So C is it's a programming language that teaches you things like memory management, pointers, and system level programming. It is the foundation of most operating systems, embedded systems, and performance critical applications. You could also look into C++. So C++ actually builds on top of C. It aids object-oriented programming to C and is used in the likes of your game engines, real-time systems, and high-frequency trading, right? Let's say you have learned all these in a space of, let's say, three months. You could build a project. For example, you could try building a simple file manager in C that lets you create, delete, and move files using system calls, right? While you are there in low-level programming languages, one thing that you want to miss is actually to learn the basics of shell scripting and Linux commands. As you'll be writing your code, as you'll be typing your code, you'll be typing some commands. So if you want to be efficient developer, you need to be comfortable working in the terminal. So I would encourage you to learn the basics of, of shell here yeah, to automate tasks. Get comfortable with Linux commands like your LACD and the likes and also use terminal based text, text editors like your Vim or Nano because sometimes you won't have access to fans GUIs, right? Where you can click button by button, right? So let's say you've learned the basics of Shell and Linux. You could perhaps write a simple project, write a bash script that installs all your favorite dev tools with one command instead of setting them up manually, right? Let's move on to the next stage that I recommend. We call it DSA, right? Data structures and algorithms. Now that you know a programming language, you need to think like a problem solver. Why does this matter? Think of coding like cooking. If a programming language are ingredients, then DSA, which is data structures and algorithms, is the recipe. Without the right, the right recipe, your dish, which is actually your code, might be slow inefficient or even break so learn the essential data structures essential data structures that's your arrays linked lists stacks queues hash tables trees and graphs also learn essential algorithm which is sorting searching graph alg algorithms dynamic algorithms i'll give you a real world example let's say for example you're building a food delivery app like uber eats you need a graph algorithm to find the fastest delivery route. You use priority queue to assign orders based on distance. You implement hash tables for quick restaurant lookups. You see, a pro tip that I can give to you while you're learning DSA and algorithms is to solve at least one problem a day. You can use the likes of your lead code or code forces. It's like going to the gym. They say consistency beats intensity, right? So once you're done with data structures and algorithms, you can move to the next stage. The next stage is actually now system programming and DevOps. This is actually now you building on top of your basic shell scripting and you know Linux, right? So at this stage, you understand programming and problem solving. But real-world applications don't just run on your laptop locally. They live in networked, automated, and secure environments. So I would advise you to go deep into Linux 
and also understand the Unix commands, learn system calls, process management and memory management, master file system, networking commands and permissions. In your bash scripting, bash and scripting, automate rep repetitive tasks using bash scripting, write scripts to automate deployments, database, database backups and system monitoring. Also learn things like networking and security is very important. Understand how the internet works at this stage. You will learn things like TCP, IP, protocols, HTTP, DNS. Learn about firewalls, encryption, and authentication because you need to build secure apps, right? You can also learn about CI slash CD, which is what we call continuous integration and deployment. Learn about Docker and Kubernetes. Deploy applications in containers instead of running them manually. Use GitHub Actions or Jenkins to automate uh, testing and deployment, right? So an example on this stage, you could just build a small project, maybe for example, to set up a CI slash CD pipeline that automatically deploys your project to AWS or Versa when you push your code to GitHub, right? So once you're done at this stage, we can move to the next stage now. And the next stage is actually to transition to high level programming languages, right? So on high level programming languages, it makes your development faster and easier. I recommend programming languages such as Python, JavaScript. Python is used in web development, AI, automation, and even scripting. So if you want to get into machine learning, for example, Python is a must. JavaScript, we call it the language of the web. Whether you're building front-end apps with maybe React, Vue, Angular, or back-end APIs, Node.js, JavaScript is everywhere. So why would you learn a high-level programming languages? Because they're beginner-friendly. They have huge libraries, and companies are always hiring Python JavaScript, PHP developers and the likes. Once you have learned these high level programming languages, you could build a project, for example, to build a REST API in Python using Flux or Django or even use Node.js. You can create an interactive website using React or Vue, right? So once you're done at this stage, the next stage you need to move into is specialization. Specialization is very important. Now that you've got a solid foundation, it's time to specialize in a high paying field. Here are your options. You could look into machine learning and AI, learn about neural networks and deep learning with TensorFlow or PyTorch. PyTorch. AI is the future, they say. You could also look into web development, become a full stack web developer. You can build React applications using maybe Next.js or Next or Angular, right? Or even Django, right? You could go into that. You could also transition to mobile development. You can build native applications. You can create your iOS apps, Android apps, right? Or cross-platform apps using Flutter or React Native. Or you could choose a different path, which is blockchain in Web3. You can learn Solidity to write smart contracts and build decentralized apps, right? So what is the reason of specializing? Specializing, we have a bigger impact than generalists, right? Once you are done um, choosing your path, right? What you could do is to build a project here. You could build a recommendation engine in Python. You could even develop a real chat application in JavaScript or simply create a crypto wallet using Solidity, right? So my final thoughts on this is to keep learning because tech evolves fast. Now there's AI, ChatGP, DeepSeek, right? But you need to have solid foundation. It's very important to have a solid foundation to understand what happens under the hood, right? Before you even touch uh, the other high level things, right? Stay updated with trends, courses, and open source contributions. Focus on problem solving. It's not just knowing about frameworks, it's about building things that solve real problems. And also remember to always network with other developers, build your portfolio, contribute to GitHub, write blogs, right? So if this roadmap really helped you, 
give me a like button and subscribe for more content like this also drop a comment and tell me at which stage you are currently in we can make a discussion thank you for watching and see you next week